Hey YouTube, it's Luke here. I want to do another review for you today. Um, this one's going to be on the Pioneer DJ. Uh, this is the DDJ RR. Uh, so recently I was in the market for a record box controller and I was really looking heavily at the DDJ 1000. Um, you know, it's very CDJ style kind of controller. And what I ended up with was going with this because it's a little more lightweight, a little more portable. Um, for what I use it for, it's, it's actually really wonderful. And I don't need a four channel mixer, so I think the two channel one really does a great job. Um, so I just want to go through some of this. Uh, I've been playing with this controller for about a month and a half now. Uh, playing a lot, probably four nights a week, probably five hour sets, stuff like that. So um, definitely got a lot of use out of this thing. Okay, so what do I want to tell you guys about this controller? Um, first of all, it's very, very cool, very functional. Um, I love it. I love the browse knob. I love the load buttons, the size of them, the placements of them. Uh, something that I really like about this, like on the SX2 that I've been playing on, <clears throat> It had deck buttons on the sides uh, to select between decks one and three and, and two and four. I really like having these switches up here to switch from the line to deck one to deck three, you know, etc. So um, that's pretty nice. The controls right here underneath the browse wheel are very user friendly, like being able to hit back and just scroll through this. Uh, truly in the club, being able to do that really fast uh, to sort through your music library is helpful. And I really, really like that. All the pots. Very nice. Trim knobs, very nice. Uh, the tempo sliders, I really, really like them. I like the length of them. I like the placement of them. Uh, they're very nice. Again, with the Q buttons, are very nice. Uh, that you know, just the feel of all of their pads. It's, it's you know, Pioneer buttons. There's a little, little tactile feel. Uh, of course, there's that click when you hit them, and it's, it's just really nice. Um, <clears throat> so channel faders one and two. These are both very nice. These will also control the on-air feature that's in the center of the platter. Uh, so if you notice, uh, there's no light on. If you turn the volume up, uh, the platter's basically telling you, you know, if you hit the hot cue, yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, you're live. So flip it over to the right, and you'll see over on deck two, the on-air is lit up in the center of the jog wheel there. Uh, speaking of jog wheels, the jog wheels are very, very nice, very easy to use. Um, I like the resistance on them. They're not very heavy. Uh, if you've played on an SX2 or similar controller, they've got a little more weighty of a platter to them. Uh, I like the response of these. It's very nice. I like the feel around the outside. You know, of course, for jogging in your uh, tempo, you know, you're bending your pitch there, it, it feels very nice. All the hot cue pads are awesome. And something that I've loved since I've switched from Serato to record box is the pad effects, okay? So if I'm playing a track over here, I've got some live effects. Um, you know, I can be putting in a flanger, sweep, anything like that. And I love the release effects, echo out. You know, you can't go wrong with that. What a, what a great transition. And to be able to have that down here is helpful. You know, of course, uh, a lot of controllers have it up here at the top and you have your adjustment knobs, but being able to do that right there is just wonderful. So filter knobs, very cool. They're a little different than the rest of the uh, knobs up here. They have a great tactile feel to them. Really like those. Uh, let's see, auto beat loop controls, very helpful, very useful. They're right here, very easy to access. Um, you know, if you're getting ready to talk about something, you can hit your auto loop, bring that on. And then it's very easy to cut your loop in half or double the length of it uh, very quickly. And if you don't want to do auto, of course, you have your in and out options down here at the bottom. So there is no crossfader curve adjustment on the front of the controller. Okay, uh, I have it in my Odyssey case right now, um, so I can kind of pick it up. You can see it a little bit, hopefully, in the video there. There are only two knobs. You see two headphone jacks, a quarter inch and an eighth inch. Uh, there is your level output for that, and there's your mic level over here. Now, the mic input is on the back of the controller. Uh, it's great placement, in my opinion. I hate it when they put it on the front. That's a cheap thing. So, to adjust the crossfader curve, you do have to go into um, record box, into the settings, and it's, it's actually very simple to do. And it's something that I think most people don't adjust very often, at least I don't and some of the DJs I play with don't. Um, so for me, I set it, forget it, and it's it's wonderful. Uh, the slicer is very nice, and to be able to capture sequences for the slicer, things like that, is, is very cool. And then, of course, on the sampler page, uh, you can put your drops, you know, whatever you want to put on here. If you've got some effects you really like, you know. Love the drops, you know, being able to hit that right there, go to your hot cue, right in the song, awesome. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, the needle search up here at the top is awesome. I love needle searches, you know, especially if you're bringing in a new track, you know, during a set and you don't really know what you're looking for, you can shoot through that waveform real quick uh, on screen using that needle search. 
There is a master tempo and tempo range uh, control right here. This is very cool. So if you hit master tempo, that's essentially your key lock, okay? And then what you do is you hit shift and hit it, and that'll allow you to adjust your tempo range for your tempo slider. Very neat feature on both decks. There is a slip reverse right here, aka sensor button, uh, which is very helpful. There are grid adjustment buttons down here, which uh, are very, very neat. And something I've really started using when I started using record box is sync. Uh, you know, one thing that's awesome is, uh, you know, searching around on your tempo slider is fine, but, you know, in a pinch, if I've got four beats left in a song and I've got to mix out of something real fast, you know, sync, sync, hot cue, and bam, you're done. Uh, timing's perfect. And, you know, something that's very cool about record box is the beat grid. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say, oh man, you know, I gotta adjust the beat grid all the time and stuff like that, but man, I'll tell you what, it's worth it. Uh, once you get that beat grid adjusted on those songs, everything just falls into place and, and your mixes are just so much better naturally. So it's been an awesome upgrade for me. All right, so I plan on doing another video, uh, do a set on this and just kind of show you guys some of the functionality of it. Um, <clears throat> but just some overall thoughts. Build quality is awesome. I'm not going to lie. I dropped it already one time. Uh, I forgot to put my foam pads in it. Pulled this thing down. Bent the crossfader and the knob fell off. Um, that's not why I have a blue knob. I just like to have a colorful knob. But just so you know, it has taken a beating already. And it, it's, it's holding up really well. Um, I try and keep it very clean. You know, I wipe it down after every set. Uh, it always helps. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love the pads. It's very easy to play. And again, I've been playing it for about six weeks. And it's just... Things are so natural, you know, the ergonomics of the controller, the placement of the knobs and things like that are very, very nice. So I'm really glad I bought it. If, if you're trying to make the switch to record box and, and you're, you know, a professional DJ, maybe you don't want one of the cheaper controllers, but you're not sure if you want to buy something like a DDJ 1000, you know, I would definitely recommend this. Get into record box. I mean, I use the lighting, I use the video and it is awesome. Um, sometime I'll do a, an on-screen thing showing you about the video and the lighting. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, you know, I'd love to get back to you as fast as I can. I'll answer any questions you might have about this controller, but uh, just an awesome unit. So thanks again for watching and talk to you guys soon.